Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for being here with us. My name is Brandon Christie. The title for this presentation is The Case for Human Unity. The first part will be discussing how unity appears to be a natural progression for us as a species based on the universal dynamic of unity being virtually expressed in all of life and on the critical role that unity has had in our human evolution. The second part looks at human division, where we basically struggle against each other for survival on a global scale. Part three, false divisions, a quick part about how the notion of division is, is a narrow and really false perception of the world, and that our observable human earth oneness really returns us to reality as the most relevant and productive view to hold. And the fourth section, unity, looks at what the powerful benefits would be of a unified global society as contrasted to today, and then into some closing points. So part one, progression to global unity. Human unity has been an issue of survival. It's not just a, a lovely thought. Defined as the state of being one or whole, unity is expressed virtually everywhere in life. The earth itself is a unified, living, interconnected system made up of interacting parts, attached to and a part of progressively larger unified living system wholes. Cooperation, the act of working together for common gain and achieving more than being on your own is also widespread throughout nature as a common survival strategy expressed at many levels of life from bacteria to living organisms to social structures of, of birds and in insects and it's universal in mammals. And we know that the evolution of life evolved from this kind of cooperative way at the cellular level when life was just forming on Earth inside cells, when the lower competing units of those cells would start to cooperate with each other, uh, cells started to form more and more complex life forms. Now, competition, the struggle between and within species for survival is also widespread throughout nature as a means of survival. Cooperation and competition are the activism of life to survive. And it's no surprise that our social mode has been based on these two varying roles throughout our evolution. Today, competition is the basis for our social structure in what we call the competitive market system. But our capacities for cooperation are, and unity are ever present. Cooperation has its roots, obviously, in the early stages of our evolution. The culture of cooperation was a very successful survival strategy and we owe our evolution to our pro-social abilities to work together in communities. It benefited us to help each other as support was lent back, creating a mutually supportive group team. Not only did this social unity work for us, but our very human biology is wired for it. The more connected we feel to others, the healthier and happier we are. Culture in general is, is full of evidence of this need to be connected from the social media phenomenon to public events. And if you look around, there's kind of like this social nature to everything that we do. Through our early evolutionary cooperative behavior, our young species succeeded. And in time, populations increased. As populations increased, another major driver of human evolution that has continued to shape our values and cultures today is technical innovation. From early stone and bone tools to early farming and agriculture to early developments in transportation and energy harnessing to the industrial revolution that transformed our economy at the time to the modern day of space exploration and the global internet, technology and awareness has always resulted in increasingly more connected, more interdependent paradigms that conform to the technical reality and awarenesses of the times. Human society has changed greatly over time as our advancements continue to connect us in larger and larger ways where we are now more and more a unified, interdependent world community. Now harm done in one part of the world affects the entire population. And with that basic realization, we now find that one's personal world of survival becomes strangely and ironically self-sabotaging because at the end of the day, we all directly or indirectly influence society, a society which influences us. So it is more and more now in all of our self-interest to have a responsibility for the obvious reciprocal roles that we have in society. Throughout our evolution, one's survival, activism, and awareness could only afford to extend to one's family or community at the exclusion of outsider groups. As we gained experience in the world and got better at surviving, communities grew, but survival was crude, resources were scarce, 
and the social environment was still competitive, setting the stage for the competitive division paradigm we exist in today. Part two, division. Human society is based on a multi-level division and competition from the local and global level, consisting of nation states, race, creed, social class distinctions, giving this illusion that we are all inherently different and that we should act upon that perspective when in fact we share only a common human experience. Given this historical divisionary view, along with the environmental scarcity that has really always been with us, it's easy to see how we built our economic approaches and philosophies around this view where humanity today still struggles essentially against itself an advanced form of competing for survival. This divisionary mode of interaction is no longer relevant to us in the modern day, carrying with it major consequences such as scarcity, war, crime and corruption, inefficiencies, environmental harm, a hostile social environment, and serves as a great hindrance to our human progress. Here's a quick overview of some of these consequences. War. War is an age-old tradition fetish of dominating over each other out of fear, yet at the same time this pattern is being really provoked by the very nature of our still survivalist social mode itself, where control over land and resources still equate to group advantage and hence ensured survival. War is also a profitable industry, bringing in about one and a half trillion dollars annually, further reinforcing the pattern. The applications of modern technology, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence to warfare makes it increasingly easier and quicker to kill ourselves in greater numbers. This kind of destructive power really threatens the whole planet now that we all share, making it all the more critical that nations learn to find common ground for mutual benefit to actually achieve the goal of peace. Crime and corruption, mainly motivated by the need to survive regardless of the social and environmental costs, whether it's scavenging for food, recyclables, or it's stolen property, or it's the highest corporate crimes, the lines of what's legal or right are blurred up and down the scale as the divisionary structure of human economic interaction is based on this doing whatever's necessary to make it. Inefficiency. Competing and not working together is inefficient from a fundamental standpoint, putting a drain on valuable resources and energy overall, causing much more injury and loss than good. The economic operations of our human division and competition today, as expressed in these pictures, are extremely inefficient. Uh, production and distribution of goods are non-localized. When you look at it, it's non-streamlined, uh, shipped from long distances crisscrossing all over the planet, transportation systems are a mess, our methods for harnessing and converting energy is inefficient and really dirty. There are hundreds of millions of undernourished people in the world and at the same time there's hundreds of millions of overweight people in the world, a severe imbalance and inefficiency. There's also a great waste of time which is really valuable where people literally sit in hours of traffic a day, people waiting in lines and, and general navigating of the needless complexity of modern day society. Environmental harm. With such inefficiencies naturally comes environmental harm and waste, with rampant pollution to our soil and water, our atmosphere, with also noise and light pollution, all outcomes of a divisionary competitive structure where individuals and businesses have to attain and maintain a profit as priority at every turn. Social hostility. Our environment is hostile at the social and macro levels with the pressures and stress that comes with having to prove your worth daily in a competitive environment. And with the inherent social class inequality that is structured right in to our economic model where some literally have less right to life than others. This unfair and unnecessary structural violence is a major source of crime, stress, and behavioral conflicts in general. World division and competition greatly hinders progress as successes, ideas, new technology, new information are not shared but are restricted by competitors for advantage. New improvements that can benefit all of society are literally restricted and withheld and protected. With division and competition and scarcity and trade and exchange, 
comes naturally this thing called cost, which is very, very limiting, where as a species, we are literally unable to afford our own progress. Stepping back here from a purely technical standpoint, just looking at the Earth, a resource abundant, humane, global system that ensures the quality of life for everyone is a reality. It's really no longer technically necessary or rational to compete against each other as a world society as we do today in our economic traditions. It is only reasonable to unite globally and harness the global potential. Part three, false divisions. Divisions are obviously false. Distinctions are made only for the sake of communication. The Earth is about four and a half billion years old. A unified, interconnected system, as Jason was describing, consisting of many interacting life systems. There's a physical order to the natural Earth environment in which all species interact. This common ground experience virtually transcends all notions of cultural division. Since our survival and quality of life as a species depends upon how well we interact with the natural world based on our emerging understanding of it, our worldview and economic methods should always be applied in the most relevant and encompassing context that we can observe. From this perspective, nation states and other widespread social divisions are clearly arbitrary and false divisions, and we can acknowledge and respect this reality that we are a single species community trying to make it on a planet in space and harness this community potential to the benefit of all of us or not. Part four, unity. Our future is world unity, one of positive interdependence, holding great possibilities for future sustainability. As we evolve out of our long assumed default mode of division and competition and begin to harness our collectivity, developing a world system that reflects that potential and that reflects our growing understanding of both ourselves and the earth, a very different world emerges where many of the conditions that motivate and are the main cause of problems today would simply not exist, structurally or socially. By collectively applying our current potentials for harnessing clean energy, applying automation to labor and setting up networks for high-speed transit and a cooperative unified world economy that could easily meet the life needs for our global population at a high level, energy and resource abundance would become a reality and eliminating the need to engage in the false life system of financial exchange, gone with its many consequences and irrelevancies. In a unified world, true security and peace could obviously never really come from retaliatory cycles of violence and force and intimidation, but can only come from a global solidarity, a global consciousness, right? Patriotic loyalty to one's homeland is, is really inward and exclusive rooted in superiority and fear, which only fuels tensions between the people of the world, not cohesion and peace. Global unity would be efficient, as working together transcends the dysfunctional barriers of affordability, um, economic methods of transportation, production, distribution of goods, energy, harnessing, could all be optimized directly based on what's technically possible, not financially possible. People's awareness and concern could now shift from one's own personal world of survival to that of the global society, fostering truly sustainable environmental awareness. Social unity creates well-being and synergy. Division creates clash and stagnation. In closing, competing against each other is a primitive survival mode, characteristic of an early stage of evolutionary development with no relevance to empathic, cooperative, modern-day human society with the scientific awareness and technology that can support the entire human population. Our evolution from small communities to being progressively connected in larger social organizations implies a new global age. And with the ongoing consequences of human division, a move to unity is not just a natural evolutionary progression, but as a pressing necessity of the times. The Zeitgeist Movement is a worldwide response to this imperative for unity. The movement recognizes that a shared global consciousness is an essential step towards this. Its activism in part seeks to unify the human family through this basic perspective that we all share this planet and that all nations must disarm and learn to share resources and ideas if we expect to survive in the long term. Thank you very much.